hope it's okay we get all this recorded and i am going to mute everybody i if you do have any questions please put them in the chat uh and i will get there we go we need our speaker on here okay gonna push the live button Well, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the team meeting today. Good to see you. I hear different people calling in from different places. Uh, you know, this profession is so exciting. So often there are, you know, you, you, you see and hear certain people that are having success and in Zenzino, there are people that have had great success. And, you know, you kind of wonder, can I do this? Is this something I can do? Well, I think that's one of the things that is really great to hear from the people who have had success, to hear their story, to hear how did they get to where they, where they are. Because our speaker for today is just somebody that is really inspiring for me, not only because she's a woman, <laughs> um, but also because every time she's speaking, I think, well, she's just so knowledgeable. She just knows so much. She's, it just seems like this is you know, just super simple for her and easy. And, you know, it's, it's just, there's just something about her that has this authority. There's something about her that kind of, you just want to listen to. Um, and, and everybody has a story in this business. So I think it's really exciting to hear, how did they start? Where did they come from? Um, so let's just bring her on here, our absolutely beautiful uh, ambassador, Vivica Steinbeck Parr. Hi, Vivica. Hi, Carla. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to be in your amazing US team. Well, you know, we uh, the growth that your team is having is absolutely incredible. And I don't care. There's so many people calling in from different places. And I'm hoping the North American team have the biggest years because we want to I think everybody wants to have the momentum that you're having. But you know, there's there's a reason that you're having momentum. There's there's a history behind it. So I, it's not just something that just happens. It's something that you you learn along the way. You make some decisions. I know that there's things that make a difference. So could you kind of fill us in a little bit <laughs> about like where did you start with? How did you get into this? I mean, was is it as easy as people say it is? Yes, it's very easy. <laughs> no, it's actually uh, not that, uh, you know, when you have success, people often say to me, it's so easy for you because you have that income, you have that position. Uh, yeah, you, you know everything about the products. You have your profession as a physiotherapist. But like you say, Carla, they do not really know the history behind uh, and how everything started. So for me, when uh, my mo the moment I really remember as it was yesterday was in 2004, I was uh, married and educated to therapist. My children, three children were <clears throat> three years of age, my oldest daughter, and then I have twin boys who were two years of age. And I've just started to work again as a physiotherapist and I didn't work much because uh, it, it's not that easy to get three small children out in the kindergarten and then you need to work a couple of hours a day and then you need to pick them up again and give them food and you have all that busy lifestyle. So I remember so well because I'm from Norway and in the winter time we actually have a lot of snow and uh, I was struggling that morning to get my three children out in the car. And I had just 20 minutes and I needed to deliver my children to two different kindergartens. So I was, my heart was like, oh, beating really quick. And um, the car was old and it wouldn't start. 20 minutes before my first patient were coming. And I called my brother-in-law and he could help me and he got my car started and I made it. I was 10 minutes too late, but I was thinking, why do you do this to yourself? You have such a busy life. 
you have three small children, you have 50% working as a physiotherapist, and your income only, you can only pay for those kindergarten places. And at the next month, I was actually introduced to this industry. And two months after that again, I was on my first event, which really changed my way of thinking and my way of living. I didn't want to go to this event because I, I wasn't that hallelujah, jumping up on chairs type of person. <laughs> so I was just joining because I thought I was, wanted to be nice to my sponsor. But that was the turning point in my life when one of the partners had this speech on the stage talking about, and I was thinking he was talking directly to me, where are you in your life five years from now? What kind of wife is you? What kind of mother are you? What kind of job situation do you have? What kind of finance situation do you have? What kind of life do you have 10 years from now? 20 years from now? And I was thinking I was just following the stream. And at that moment, I really understood that within this industry, you could actually design your own life and your future because on that stage, there were so many people that had achieved so much and it was not, nothing special about them. There, there were men, there were women, they were old, they were young. And I was thinking, if they can do it, I can do it. And that's where my thoughts started to change. And I started to promote products and promote the business. But who wants to lis listen business-wise? Because that was my struggle to get someone interested in the business when you are a mother of three small children, you do not have any business experience, you are a health person, how can you trigger someone to want to join the business with you? And I didn't have much self-confidence, so I didn't dare to call anyone. I made this uh, famous name list that everyone does. I prioritized my 10 first potential partners, but I didn't dare to call them. So I was making scripts. Uh, I was writing four pages <laughs> and it went four days and I didn't dare to call anyone. And in the end, my husband said to me, Vibeke, come on, you need to push that green button. If you don't do that, nothing will happen. So I said, stay out of my way. I want to shut the door to the bathroom and I would do those five first calls. And I was sweating and I was feeling not very comfortable, but I did it. And I got three out of uh, I didn't find the words. So that was my start uh, in this industry. And uh, so, so then you can understand it happened some things between 2004 until now. So that was my beginning and the journey of this industry. Okay, so you know how many, I mean, when you were talking about the things of being mom, you know, uh, you have four kids, I have four kids, and it is, uh, like you said, it's kind of a cruise control feeling. You're doing this, you're almost like following the same steps every day. <laughs> and you kind of get to the point where it's like, okay, is there anything else? Is there, what else can I do? Um, and, and you have frustrating times. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are like, really, you were at that stage too? And, but when you're really frustrated, I think when you were introduced to the industry, um, you kind of have this could it really be possible? So you had went to an event and of course I'm going to tell everybody, it, you know, we don't have a lot of events going on uh, right now where you can go to an event, but everybody absolutely has to have their leader school ticket. Hear that, have a leader school ticket <laughs> uh, because it really does make a difference. So you're a mom of kids that are little, you had half, you know, you had a 50% hour job, a half-time job, but yet 
when you saw the industry and you saw the people and you said, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. So what was it at the event besides like, it was it, you know, was it the decision at that time? When was the time you made a decision? I cannot say that that uh, event was the decision where I went full full time, uh, but uh, it has been a process. But the event was the important thing just to start to see there is another way. But actually, like you say, Carla, to join an event, it, it doesn't have to be the first event that you attend. That is the turning point. But when you continue to join those events and you also you kind of take up new things that people say to you and your life experience also through the next couple of years make you see that this is the solution that really can make your dreams come true because many people stop to dream. They really believe that they need to have the situation they have today they lose uh, confidence in themselves and also confidence that they can change their future. So for me, it has been a process uh, to, in the personal development as well, which you can understand, where you don't need, uh, dare to call people. And today I could call anyone in the world to talk about Cincino. Then you see that the journey you have through is also important. So for me, I think it was perhaps two, three years later at an event where someone at the stage said, the most important thing is that you go full time. So what does full time mean? It means that you take your business from your head to your heart and it's it, it getting a part of you. So you never stop thinking of your business, even though you have another job, it's always there. When you talk to people, you always try to talk about what you are doing. You try to plant some seeds and little by little, you get also more and more confidence because you get more and more results. But I must say that the brick um, fell really, it, it, it was a turning point in 2015 when I met uh, Örjan, the founder, here in my hometown. Because it's not only that you need to have a product that you like, you also need to see a future in what you are doing. And what he really hit when it come, came to Cincino was the vision of getting people to, into balance with a test-based system that I have never heard of before. And working with health now for 25 years, I really understood that if we can get someone out of the fire zone and we can prove that what they are eating actually can make them in some danger in the future, and we have a solution with, with the product that can actually give them the health that they deserve as a health profession professional that made me excited but the second thing that made, made me excited was that it was so new and no one had heard about this before and also when you talk to a person that is really visionary that wants to change the world and Cincino is not the same company today as it was six years ago. I really uh, believe in the future of Cincino. And also I think that even though Örjan promised me that Cincino would grow, I think that he has, and he and not only him, but Doug and the corporate has over delivered on those promises that I got six years ago. And you don't see that much in different companies nowadays. Uh, I'm allergic to people that talk and promise too much, but do not deliver. I hate that. I hate it so much because that's very easy to do. 
But people who really have big vision and they deliver on their promises, it's so amazing to join that journey. And that makes me excited every single day in this Encino journey, because it started with zero. And now it's like, wow, what happened the last six years? Okay, so we need to like go back a little bit. So you start yeah. the profession in 2004. You're a mom of three at the time, you now have four. So in all this time, you were building a direct sales company. Um, you, you had the belief in the profession at some point that you could do it because, uh, and, and that you wanted to be your own boss. You liked, you know, that you're going to be the ones making the decisions in your life. And then you're building that business and then you meet Orion. And when you're looking at the company you've been building, you, you made a decision because of Orion and the corporate. I mean, those people who do know our corporate people, our, our founders, they know the vision and the heart of the companies, but, but you actually switched companies then at the time, correct? Mm. I did. And that wasn't easy because I'm a very loyal person. So I had been in, uh, actually, I got to know the industry in 1999. Uh, and that was New Skin. That's an American company. And I love the product. And I, I uh, uh, that was another model that uh, they have today. So I was more like selling the product. They didn't have any uh, nutritional products in Norway at the time. So that was uh, the first company I, I joined. And I thought it was so much fun to, to work with those like home parties and so, so on. And then I started in this Norwegian company in 2004 and stayed there for 11 years. But I saw that, uh, um, yeah, it didn't match my future desires. Uh, so, uh, and I also decided because I was staying so long in that company and they felt like my second family because I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> so I get really attached and close to my, my partners. Uh, and I didn't want to leave and I didn't want to do, join another business. But you know something when you have had success uh, and uh, when you have seen what kind of freedom the industry can give you, it's like you cannot forget that. So when I met Örjan, he triggered that feeling again. And I wanted to start all over again, even though I thought I don't have the energy anymore to start new, to start fresh. Uh, and at that time I had four children. So, um, and I had a full-time job as a manager in a clinic and I worked many hours a day. I worked 10 to 12 hours a day. So I didn't have time actually to, to do it. But when you see something that you really believe in, you can't let it go. And uh, you also talk to the people you have worked with before and also new people, and you see that there is a kind of interest in what you are doing, then you just start. You, you start to get your own experience when it comes to products, and you get experience also on the people around you. And I must say, 25 years working with health, I have never ever seen something as powerful as what we are doing. And when you get enthusiastic around something, you just keep talking, you just keep going and it gets in your heart and in your head. And after three years, I decided that I need to do this full time because I earned more now in Cincino than in my ordinary business. And that's just amazing that you can do something on a side business, isn't it? And I think people do not see that. They do not see that. That by working with Cincino a couple of hours a day, and it doesn't need to be like two full hours at the same time, just split those hours into small time slots when you have like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, lunch break, and to see what can happen in the small things you do every single day that can bring you something big. Mm -hmm. So we, in, in those three years, 
I thought I need to, to spend more time just doing Cincino and then I went full time. Okay, so uh, I love this because you had another side gig. I mean, so many companies out there and so many really good companies with great products. It's not that, um, but there is something uh, I like what you said about you're looking at your future because, you know, it's kind of like I remember there was a speech from Orrin Woodward where he was talking about, you know, if you're climbing a ladder, do you know where the ladder's going? Because if you're on the wrong ladder, you know, you might need to have to get down that ladder, go over and get up the ladder that's going to bring you where you want to go. And so with, I like that you said in Zenzino that, that the picture that you had for your future, Zenzino could bring you there. And then actually you said at a different time that they really, you know, if you're, if you're under deliver or if you're under promising and over delivering, like, like Zenzino did, you know, you really have that feeling. And so many people have said, you know, they're making Zenzino their final home, you know, starting up their yeah. final business, the final home. So let's go into just some of, um, you know, we said that the profession is amazing. These products are amazing. You know, health. You, you're following these, you can feel you have the passion for the products. So how about, um, you know, once you've made a decision, you say, I wanna do this. Um, what would you say, uh, you know, about the process, what you're doing, Bibika? How did you, you know, because you started Zenzino and it's just, you know, there's certain knowledge that you have. You know, I remember when you started and, and it's just been growing and growing exponentially. So what would you say the, the process that people can do? I know you talked about the phone, talked about the list, uh, but what would you say? Oh, do the things you fear the most over and over and over again. Um, because it's not comfortable to grow. And I have so many fears and uh, Many people know that uh, I wanted, I had this drive to do this also in Germany because I lived in Germany for a couple of years. And I was thinking this is perfect. This concept is perfect for Germany, but the, the market wasn't open. And I haven't been in Germany for many, many years. And I, I had very, I'm anxious of flying. I don't like to, to go on a plane and, and I don't, I didn't want to fly anywhere. But to get to Germany, I, I needed to do that. So, and also there I met some people that I needed to start to speak German again. And uh, also that was really, really hard, I think, because I was, I remember the first time I was in, in a clinic in, uh, in the north of Germany. I think you could, like, my clothes were so wet from sweat after that meeting that you could actually... <laughs> Yeah, but um, but you did it anyway. Did it. It's like, okay, how many, I, I, I've talked to so many people and they can make a list, you know, they make a decision, they say, I really wanna do this. And they want to do this, it's just wanting to isn't enough. So what, you know, I remember when you were talking about, you know, you just finally went into that bathroom to make those phone calls. So, so that, what is it that helps people get past the, you know, doing the things that they don't wanna do? Because you did that. Yes. And you know something, Carla, that, that's your why. Because if you know why you are doing what you do, then no hurdles are big enough. I didn't want to have one more winter in that car. That was not one. <laughs> I didn't want to run around every morning to get children in that car and to go into the kindergarten. I did want to decide when to work, with whom I want to work. And I also wanted to have a more relaxed financial situation. So when that drive is big enough, then it doesn't matter if you are afraid. You just do it. And also when you do things you are afraid of and you kind of have success, your confidence is growing and your belief in yourself is growing and the fear is gone. 
So when you get that experience by doing things you fear the most, you get more and more confidence, the fear disappears. Then you kind of get that fear junkie. You want to have those situations because you know you can handle that. So, so I think if, if people just kind of embrace fear and embrace uh, those struggles they have because they know why they do it, I think every one of us can do magic with Cincino. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things I've said sometimes when people say, well, you know, I get that feeling, you know, and that's out of the comfort zone. But the feeling of out of the comfort zone is kind of telling you you're on the right track. <laughs> it's not saying stop. It's like, okay. And if you go after that, you're going to be picking up the phone more often and calling the people that you really don't want to call because you're really scared of calling those people. So you started making phone calls, you started getting the business going. Um, so, you know, I, I can hear, there's so many defining moments from that beginning uh, that just make a decision. And I hope maybe this is a defining moment for some of the people listening, <clears throat> just to hear, you know, that do it anyway. And so many people, they want this. So if, if people are listening and you're saying, I really want this, uh, you would say, get out of the comfort zone. You would say, do it anyway. You would say, uh, you know, tackle your fear, do it anyway, be a fear junkie. Is that kind of how you said it? <laughs> I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> English. <laughs> Makes sense to me. I'm do I love it. Yeah. Okay. So people need to do, and, and it really is the basics. There isn't, you know, it's making the calls talking to people, following up. Is, but you also men mentioned some things about personal development. How important is that? Oh, that's the most important thing. You know, Carla, the person I am today, and when you look back 10, 15 years, and the person I was that time, is like two different words, worlds. Um, I think... The events have been very, very important to me. Uh, and for since 2004, I have attended every single event. I have just missed one. And that was when I was giving birth to my fourth child. Uh, that's, a good there, that's, a, that's an okay reason. To not <laughs> and she was actually attending when she was five months old. Uh, so... Um, because there you get all the things you need that challenge you. Uh, they have the best speakers on the stage that gives you all that, the nuggets you need to develop yourself, to challenge your thinking. And then I also, I, I wasn't really good at focusing on personal development on a regular basis at the beginning. But now I'm very strict because you woke, wake up in the morning and not every morning is amazing. You can have, you can feel really down some mornings, but when you have that habit that you start going out in the nature, get some fresh air, even though it's raining or snowing, you plug on your air, AirPods and you listen to a, a, a audio book. That's my way of starting the morning because even though you feel down you always get something that lifts you up so i never start my zooms before 10 in the morning because then i have had time to switch on my brain to listen to something that gives me fuel to help people throughout the day and to have the energy and the motivation that you need when you have a big team as well so personal development is the number one most important thing to focus on. Mm. So, so you would say, don't wait that's on the thing. Yeah. Okay. So personal development, and you do some of the audios. I know they talk about, you know, reading, listening. Uh, okay, so there's people that are saying, you know, there's upcoming events here. So how important is it? I mean, I, I know myself, events have changed my life. I am, I am an event junkie. I, if it's a Danish event, an international event, a US event, 
uh, mastermind. I will, I want to get every bit of information, uh, you know, because when you're really hungry, you want to learn everything, but how, what about the people that are like, well, I don't, I, I can't maybe afford it, or is it really going to be worth it? Things like that. What would you say? It's worth every single cent you spend because you don't only get, you need to have the confidence in things you do. And every time I attend an event, I just feel so proud to be part of Cincino when it comes to the corporate side. We have such amazing people in the corporate. And I feel so safe when Doug is talking about his visions and his goals, what they have done the last couple of months, where we have been uh, developing when it comes to the finance uh, finances regarding Cincino. And then you have all the products uh, that are the new products. You have all the fantastic people in the scientific advisory board that gives us the credibility and the trust we need to go out and feel so secure when we promote our products. And then you have professional speakers that has so many years of experience that can help us with their knowledge that we don't need to do the same mistakes that they did. So, uh, and then you also have partners that have succeed and they can tell us their story and how we can make our success happening. So, so events, it's the number one most important thing to join every single time you have a local event or an international event. You always get something from it where you can what you can use to get even better in what you are already doing and you can develop yourself and your business and your growth even more. And the more people you get on those events who are new who have never heard so much about Cincino, you can say the same things, but perhaps there is a, a partner or perhaps it's someone from the corporate or the founders that says exactly the same sentence and then they just get it. So um, just get everyone in your team to join the leader school because that's where I always say you take your business from your head to your heart and it, it, the business get a part of your, your, yourselves. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yes. I, I, I can't agree more in regards to getting people to the event. And I love that feeling. And I know you said something about, okay, this hallelujah type feeling, but I love those energetic events. And I, you know, and I remember every time you spoke. Now I remember one of the things we're going to talk a little bit about goals because last year or was it it was uh, the goal you had set for like the 2020 and i i remember uh, it was like an interview with hilda at some point and you had set like these high goals you know there's new people in here we know they should be setting their smart bronze fast silver x team express goal but there's so many people there's so i mean we have such a potential to grow and you went from even when you had how how many did you start with one year and you set this goal and it was crazy <laughs> uh and i yes, was, it was. <laughs> i mean i was thinking how crazy is that you know and and i remember because you said it to the founder you said well this is my goal uh so could you tell us a little bit about your setting goals and how important it is and i think it's like you were dreaming big it was like i don't i, I can't even explain it i was just it just i was uh, seriously wow Okay, tell the story. Yeah, you know something, it, it was uh, my first um, leader council meeting. I remember it very well. It was in Oslo. It was uh, a day before uh, the leader school started in 2019. And I think at that time I had 8,900 customers in my team. And then I wasn't really prepared for this, but they started to ask then, each and single one of the members from the leader council team, what is your goal? Uh, what, what do you have today? And what is your goal by the end of 2020? 
so I I had some goals, but I was thinking, oh my God, I don't know if I want to share this. And I think I was one of the last ones. And I remember I was really blushing when I said like, so I want to have 20,000 customers in 2020. I was thinking that's a nice number. <laughs> So when we had uh, our um, annual event in October in 2020, and I went up on the stage and I, talk, I was talking about setting goals. Talking about setting goals. <laughs> 